lots of tales to tell of the people and the places I have seen. There's towns I'd never heard of and which I can't even spell and many sights of which you'd never dream. I've seen hazy mountain ranges I thought far beyond compare and the desert's peace as night begins to fall. But when I watch the sunrise spread across the Mersey shore I feel like I've seen nothing else at all I've seen the pyramids, the leaning tower, Niagara in the rain The Rockies nearly took my breath away I've seen the lights of Cape Harry reflected in the same And walked along the road to Mandalay I've seen Spanish dances glide around a moonlit tavern floor I have marveled at the ancient Chinese wall But when I watch the sunrise spread across the Mersey shore I feel like I've seen nothing else at all And so it was in the late summer of 1990, the QE2 went into the history books as the largest passenger liner ever to enter the Mersey. However, a few months later, on Saturday the 12th of January 1991, on the same part of the river, a far less happy event took place. This was to be the last day the Royal Iris would be in service on the river. Its final cruise was to be that evening when a farewell dance was to be held so the great vessel spent its last afternoon moored at Seacombe landing stage being prepared for the evening event. It seemed strange and rather sad that a boat which had been so familiar for 40 years was to suddenly cease to be a part of the Mersey. A boat which had become a part of so many happy childhood memories of the area. Built in 1951 for Wallasey Ferries, it was then a completely new departure in design, as it was almost entirely enclosed and had quite a different colour scheme from the other boats. Its length was 149 feet 9 inches and it weighed 1,234 tonnes. It had a speed of 13 and a half knots and a capacity of 2,296 passengers, reduced to 1,000 for cruising. In the 1950s and 1960s, it was an enormous success, proving to be popular for both ferrying and cruising, for it had a ballroom, cocktail and other bars, 
a smoke room, and of course, the famous fish and chip saloon. As it spent its last few hours against the landing stage, seemingly alone, I felt the memories drifting across my mind. Memories of my first sight of this strange bullet-shaped craft sailing up the Mersey against a dockland backdrop with a hundred seagulls ducking and diving in its wake. Memories of summer evenings on Egremont Promenade, looking out at a brightly lit object reflected in the dark water, which, to young eyes, resembled the Nautilus, and being able to actually hear the music from the ballroom carried on the night air. So here it stood, looking out across the river it had become a part of. There were no crowds along the promenade, no helicopters or tugboats firing hoses into the air. It was just another day in the life of a very special boat. Sadly, a day when it was to quietly say goodbye. Bye. 